Hi, I'm Ben Province, and welcome to Show Me the Music. On today's show, I'll talk to Illphonics MC Larry Fallout Morris, but first, here's a little bit about his very impressive band. The Illphonics formed in 2006, and 13 years later, they're still made up of the same five members. Not only has the hip-hop fusion band been a fixture of the St. Louis music scene, but the Illphonics also received national attention when their 2016 music video, 96 to 99, aired on BET Jams. And in 2018, the band worked with Grammy-winning producer Tony Visconti. Well, joining me now is Larry Fallout Morris. So well, thank you so much for, for doing this. Hey, Always how you good doing? to see you. And you are the most most interviewed guest in the history of Show Me the Music. So I'll, I'll, I'll take it. So it's and, and it's a deserved honor, I would say. Thank you. Yeah, so you're doing all kinds of cool things now with, with Tony Visconti, who, for those who don't know, produced uh, so much of T-Rex and David Bowie's discography. He produced the Thin Lizzy album. And can you talk about how that relationship happened? Well, the, the connection is a uh, artist, a local artist. She lives in New York now, but she's a wonderful artist by the name of Christine Young. We opened for her at the Atomic Cowboy, oh my God, maybe four or five years ago. And she loved our music and we loved her and we collaborated on our Gone With The Trance album. She's on Sweet Misery or Sweet Missouri, you know, however you choose to say it. But one day she was in town and she brought a guest with her to see us at the Cransburg, and that guest was Tony. And we had a two hour set and in that two hour set, Tony stayed the whole time and really just enjoy the music and he was like I'm buying your CDs and so from there we just kept you know keeping in contact with him and he came back in town back in town another time and saw us again and you can just tell he really liked what we were doing well um last year around May or June I sat down there and had lunch with Christine and him or dinner actually and he was like I really like you guys and I would like to work on some music with you and I mean in a group usually the way we work you know we have to meet to discuss if we want to do something. I mean, I immediately texted him and said, we're, we're, we're working with Tony Visconti. I don't even think we need to have a conversation about that. And, you know, of course, everybody was on board. So that's kind of how it started. He's been following us for years, though. Wow. So this just wasn't a he's just saw us and boom. He's been following our progression and seeing how we work as a band, our work ethic and just, you know, the type of music we write and it worked out. Did you know he was such a fan of you guys at, at first at that performance? Yeah, he made it clear and I, he has no reason to lie. You know, he's heard a lot of music and worked with a lot of people. He was like, you guys are really good. He's like, you guys are something different. And I mean, for us, that was a, a great thing because being in St. Louis, you know, this is a blue city, a cover city and whatnot. We've worked to create an identity, which is all our own. You know, I, I can say outside of the Midwest Avengers, we came along as a group that was mixing genres with hip hop that you weren't hearing other groups necessarily do in St. Louis. And we still doing that. So it was really cool to have somebody who is a Grammy award winning, platinum selling, you know, work with probably the top rockers of all time saying to you, you guys are really different and I like this, you know. Is, is there anyone he thinks uh, uh, you guys re remind him of? That's the thing. He said, we, we, we're us. And that's what I think was exciting for him. You know, it's hip hop with tinges of rock, tinges of jazz, blues, R&B. I mean, literally, we can wake up on any side of the bed and we're doing that genre mixed with hip hop. And I think that's what really stood out to him is that you haven't found anybody that sounds the same. Now, a lot of people would say, is it like The Roots? I think The Roots is more of a soul you know, hip hop sound. We have some soul elements, but it's not quite the same. We're very influenced by our city. And so, because we're influenced by our city, you can you can hear those elements at the forefront more so than anything else. Yeah, and I was going through the list of influences on the Facebook page, mm -hmm. and I was kind of surprised to see see a couple of them. I, I do hear the roots, I do hear, hear a little bit of Jay-Z. We were talking off camera, you're a big Stevie Wonder fan. Yeah. Um, uh, and I even hear a little bit of Pink Floyd on the on the Purple Piano Society record, right? Uh, which we'll talk a little bit about later. I love that album, as you know. Mm -hmm. um, but I was surprised to see Red Hot Chili Peppers, Faith No More, The Beatles. Oh yeah, I mean we listen to everything. Like we love music, so you just never know. When we first started out, you can hear more of the rock influence on our sound album. That's about 2009, 2010. You can even hear it on our reality check. It's in the more recent years that we started to evolve into other phases. But I mean, if you look at it, our guitarist, Kevin, as some people may know him as Killer K, 
he's very rock influenced, you know what I mean? And so when he plays guitar, you get that in our music, you know what I mean? I grew up, I remember seeing a video for Give It Away by the Red Hot Chili Peppers, and I was like, this is one of the dopest videos I've ever seen <laughs> in my life. I'm like, you know, that's funk though. It is, you yeah, know, it's very, absolutely. It, it's funk, you know, our bass player, he's a jazz guy, but you know, he has a lot of, background in rock too but you know he's more jazz and influenced by bass players and our drummer and um our drummer he plays keys in oregon he comes from the church so you know it's it's it's, it le it's an amalgam of so many sounds you know it just works out and how do you decide what your focus is going to be stylistically mm -hmm. on an album i know you kind of have a little bit of mm -hmm an approach releasing singles more recently. Right. But as far as with, with, a, with an album, mm -hmm. how do you explore to, to an extent, but, but not, uh, not too much that doesn't all fit together on an album? I just think it's how we're writing at the time. The Purple Piano Society, so I'm gonna give you a little background on that. So I graduated from University City High School, four of the members we did, we graduated from U-City. And when we were at U-City, there was a Purple Piano Club and they would roll out this purple piano and the keyboardist in our group would play it all the time. And I used to say, it'd be awesome to name an album after this purple piano. It came up countless times over the course of Illphonics, but we had a few songs that were very, you know, I guess you could say they were royal. They sounded very, you know, like, you know, high society. So I was like, it'd be cool if we named an album the purple piano you know, club or something, and ba our bassist Spanky, he was like, why don't we just name the society? I was like, that's even better. And it worked out, you know. And the themes of it, if you listen to the themes of the song, it kind of, it fits yeah. with, you know, yeah. royalty. You yeah, know? in so many ways, it's a concept album. That's exactly what it is. And you don't expect a hip hop concept album. It's almost like new mm -hmm. territory yeah. for the genre almost. Well, that's the thing that we we're, 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 we get torn about is because we've been together for 13 years and we've watched the industry change. I mean, I've been doing, I've been emceeing and involved in music since the age of 13. I remember seeing people pull up to events and open up their trunk and sell CDs out of it. I remember where you had to put an album together and people would go buy that album go home and listen to the whole thing over and over again, you know. Then we watched it shift to MySpace. Then it shift to Facebook and then Instagram, the online stuff. And we've had to, we've never changed our sound in a sense. This is always the Ilphonic sound at the core, but we've adapted the way we release music to fit the generations and to fit the people we're going with. So to your point, yes, it's hard, you know, because, you know, we're used to writing albums. And so now we have to think more, you know, song to song, you know, it's, it's a different approach. Is there a new album coming out or will it be a series of singles or kind of a little bit of both? So it's a series of, of releases. So the whole project theme is Deviate. And the Deviate is we're kind of going away from what you know. And we've already released Deviate Part 1. Our song Palm Trees that is out now is a part of DV8 Part 2, which should be coming out in July. Then after we release that in September, we'll come out with the third one. And then when you look back at it, you get the total album. That's the album. Okay. So it's just a different way of thinking Will about you re-release it as an album? We're working on something even better than just an album, but I don't want to say quite yet. Okay. But just put it to you like this. If, you are a, if you're a music lover and you're an Ilphonics fan, you'll like what we're going to do at the end. But for right now, it's bits and pieces, you know, and we're spreading it out throughout the year. Okay. Do you think there are uh, hip-hop artists right now whose sound could be, you know, released 10 years from now, 20 years ago? I mean, I'm for sure that in many ways there are you know i think it's just one of I, I think it's just one of those things where as an artist you have to decide what's your end game are you looking for immediate attention are you looking for the hit now or are you looking to have a long career and i think people have to understand as an artist you can have a long career and do well if you execute it correctly so maybe you might not be able to buy a yacht but you might be able to tour and make a decent living as a musician if you stay the course. I think the gift and the curse of today is with our current music industry, it's kind of direct to consumer, you know what I mean? In the sense that 
you have to get out there, promote, do the groundwork. But what's cool is when you find your fan base and you create that fan base, if you do it right, they'll follow you and they'll support you. But you got to put that work in, you know. So I think that's the, the gift of it. I mean, just the curse of it all is that everybody wants content all the time and as an artist you know i write my best material when i get to grow and live life you know when i feel some pain when i see something on the news that's how you know and it's one of those things where there's this constant demand for material 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 and i think as a group we've done pretty well at releasing frequently enough where we're not irrelevant but we also believe in just taking the time to write what's real to us and that, need, that requires some growth, that requires living life, you know? And so it's, it's a different world that you're living in. You just try to find your happy ground in it, you know? I don't believe in just putting out songs every five minutes, you know, I don't do that. But I do believe that, you know, you should be putting out good quality content when you put something out. I'd rather put out a song every four months and you hear it and you say, this is really, really good. When's the next one? Then me put out a song every two weeks and it's just out there and eventually it gets stale, you know? So I just think as artists, you have to, you have to figure out what do you want to do? Or are you a live group? Do you want to tour? Do you want to get out in front of people? Because in truth, that's where you're going to get your most fans. When people see us, it becomes real. They'll listen to our music and like it. But when they see us on stage, it's like, okay, I'm now an ill fan, you know? Yeah, and, and you talked about this kind of series of singles you're releasing. Now, how many of those uh, did you work on with Tony Visconti? We worked on a greater majority of them, but three of them were directly in the studio. So we've released those three, Make Your Move, uh, Work, which was our last single, and the song that we just released, Palm Trees, but he's involved with all of them. So he's there guiding and whatnot, saying what he likes, what he doesn't. The cool thing about technology now is you don't have to sit in the same room with a person every day. Cause I mean, he's Tony Visconti, he has a lot going on. So he can't be in St. Louis for nine months, you know? So he's still very much a part of this process. And one thing I've never asked you, where did Fallout come from, your stage name? So Fallout, when I was younger, I was really obsessed with nuclear energy. <laughs> I was really into like watching the atomic bombs go off. I was, you know, a little boy, you know, boom, boom, that type of stuff. And I, one day I was always very, I was, I was very able to pick up on things quickly. You know, if I really got into something, I grabbed onto it. And I remember writing, Fallout is a force that's unstoppable. MCs beating me is theoretically impossible. Like I'm speaking physics in the song and the name Fallout stuck, you know? And so that's what it, it, it was my name when I used to battle rap, it stuck with me. But I think for right now, we're gonna continue to push the envelope and be on the forefront of music here in St. Louis and continue to rep our city to the fullest because people just don't know how diverse music is here. People think, you know, and this is not a bad thing. I'm from you city. Oh, it's, it's Nelly or oh, it's just Chuck Berry or this. And these are all great people, but I'm like, it's so much more. And we're all inspired by so many people. I mean, St. Louis, if you think about it in a lot of genres, jazz, blues, even hip hop, because there's a lot of debate that the first hip hop song was broken here in St. Louis, Rapper's Delight. Um, you know, if you look at all the musical backgrounds and whatnot, it all converges here. Well, thank you so much for doing this. Mm -hmm. It's been a lot of fun. Thank you. And you're watching Show Me The Music. Well, that will do it for today's show. I wanna give a big thank you to my guest, Larry Fallout Morris from the Hip Hop Fusion Band. The Ilphonics, and on behalf of the entire crew, my name is Ben Province, and I'm asking you to show me the music.